Welcome to The Appleseed, the storytelling podcast from BYU Radio, where your family can gather for great stories from great storytellers in every episode. Stories bring us together, and we hope the stories on the show will spark memories and thoughts that you can share with the people you love. I'm your host, Sam Payne, and on today's show... We're going to be hearing songs and stories about freedom, the importance of it, and the cost of it. First, we'll hear a story that will sound like a historical narrative. And while it's actually an original story created and told for you by our friend, the great storyteller Sheila Arnold, it's got roots in a Mississippi legend, the legend of the singing river in which a forbidden love between a princess from the Biloxi tribe and a chieftain from the Pascagoula tribe fell in love, starting a war between the two groups. And as the Biloxi bore down on the Pascagoula, threatening to kill them or enslave them, the Pascagoula had a terrible choice to make. And that's the Mississippi legend, an introduction to it anyway. And you'll hear shades of it in Sheila's story. Though Sheila adds to her story some of the experiences common to enslaved African Americans. Sheila's story is called Wading in the Water. And it'll fill you with thoughts and feelings about freedom. We should say Sheila tells this story with great emotion, great passion. And it contains a few intense scenes. If it were a movie, it'd probably be rated PG-13. It's a powerful tale, but you may want to listen first before you play it for very young children. So you'll know how to prepare them, and so you'll know what you might talk about with them after hearing the story. Here's Sheila Arnold on The Appleseed. God's gonna trouble the water. Oh, wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Who's that one all dressed in white? God's gonna trouble the water. It must be one of them Israelites. God's gonna trouble the water. Oh, wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Oh, God's gonna trouble the water. Oh, God's gonna trouble the water. He ran to the water. He ran with all of his might. That song over and over in his head, he was going wading in the water. He had to run. He was old, but there was something inside of him that made him get faster and faster as he went along the way. He couldn't turn back. He could hear master. He could hear master's folks behind him. He could hear the dogs on the ground. He knew the horses were there, but he couldn't go back. He went to that water and intended to go down in that water and never come back up. Long time. Moses had been a slave for a long time, all his life. And he he'd always done what was good for master, always done the right thing. And he got old. And his love, the one he jumped the broom with when she was young, oh, Peg, she was a mighty fine woman. Peg was the cook. And, and that evening, just that evening, Peg had cooked the food, but her hands, they shook a bit when she brought food in. And she sometimes burned some things not like she used to. She sometimes did. And she brought that food in. 
And her hands shook a bit. And before she could bring the food to him, he saw the burnt pots. And he said something. And her hands shook so hard, they fell to the ground. And Master got so angry, he jumped up out of her seat. Out of his seat, he lifted his hand up and he wiped across her face. And she lay back. And she hit her head. She hit her head on, on, the, on the fireplace. She hit her head on the fireplace. And Moses watched because he was, he was right there trying to put more wood on the fire. And he watched, he watched as her, her head go down. He watched and she ain't got no breath. Everything he loved. And he picked up the poker from the fireplace and he turned around to master forgetting exactly who he was and he turned that poke on him and hit him across the head and knocked him to the ground. He didn't stay long enough to see if he was breathing. He run out that door and he ran to the water never intending to come back up. He could hear him behind him. The last thing he thought was I'm wading in the water. God's going to trouble this water. And he dove in. He didn't know how to swim. So he just sink. Uh, uh, uh. He started fighting, 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 fighting. He wanted to, he didn't want to lift up. They don't caught him. They don't caught him. He didn't want to live. And he knew what they was do to him. They couldn't fight against him no more. They pulled him on the shore. And somebody started pressing in his stomach, turning his head and everything come out. And he started to breathe. But he don't want to, but he opened his eyes. It ain't master. And he hear talk over him. He don't understand. And he know where he be. Out where they was. And there was, there was an island. There was an island in the midst of that large Mississippi River. And on one side there were the Spanish. And the other side there were, there were them American boys. But they say if you could get to the island, you always be safe. And he look at them. He look at them Indian folk. They took him in. They took in Moses and put him in the house of one of the old women. And they tended to him. And when Moses was well enough, he began to work. The men laughed at him. He did women's work. <laughs> he was much better in the kitchen. And he was better if he was, he was fixing the greens and plucking them together and turning them. He was better picking berries than he was ever doing any hunting at all or even fishing. And he would do the work that was there. The children would were fascinated with him with his hair that didn't feel like the hair. His skin that was an, an ebony color. It didn't come off when you touched him right there. But the whole village was fascinated by his voice. Sometimes he would be cooking around the women or he would be weaving the baskets around and with the women and he would forget himself. He would forget himself for a little bit and he would start humming. And then his humming would come to singing. Wait in the water, children, wait in the water. And the other songs would come. Oh, I tried and I tried. I tried and I tried. I tried and I tried until I found the Lord. Oh, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Turn me around. Song after song poured from this man's heart. But there was one song that when he began, everyone stopped and looked. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me. There was something about the way that he sung that song. It's like he believed it. 
And so, so he stayed and he learned some of the language. The children taught him, <laughs> as children do. They taught him a word for hair and he taught him the word for hair and they taught him nose and he taught him nose. And all the adults would laugh at this, this dark man that played with children. One day, from the other side of the island came the Spanish. Some of them, at least. They brought an interpreter with them. And they went up to the chief of the people. And they told them, we will now take this island. You can either be our slaves. Or we will war against you. And you will all be killed. We will arrive tomorrow morning. Well, once they left the island, everyone came together. They came together at night. There was a large, large fire, a bonfire, as they say. And everyone, everyone, the smallest to the oldest, they were there. They sat around, and they began to discuss what to do. And the young people knew what they wanted to do, don't they always? The young people knew. We must, we must go to war. We will win against them. It is right for us to go to war. This is our land. We should never be moved. But the old ones knew. War is not the answer. We will go to war and not live. We will be made slaves indeed, but at least we will live. And they discussed, the men, the women, the children, the old, the young, they discussed, they argued, they yelled, they, they began this. And it became quiet. They didn't know what else to say. And Moses stood. I don't know if you can understand me, but I've already been a slave. And I won't ever be a slave again. Ever. I die a free man. You made me a free man. Oh, freedom. Freedom's over me. And with his head held high, he walked back to his tent. And slowly the people left, from the oldest to the youngest. Early in the morning, as the sun was just rising above the horizon, on the opposite side from where the Spanish would come, the people awoke. And they saw the water. They all went down to the water. <clears throat> they could hear. They could hear the lapping of oars in the water on the other side. And they stood at the banks of this water, silent. And Moses opened his mouth. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in a grave. Or I'll be home with my Lord, and I'll be free. And he began to sing again, oh, freedom. And the chief put his first foot in the water. Oh, freedom. And his next one and someone began to walk beside him. Oh, freedom over me. And the people began to walk into the water, holding hands with each other. And before I'll be a 
slave, and it came up to their waist. I'll be buried in a grave, and it came up to their chest, or I'll be home with my Lord, and it came up to their mouths, and I'll be free, and it covered their heads, and the last thing that people heard as they walked into the water as free people was Moses' song. Hold freedom. And Moses sang into the water. And as the Spanish saw, all they could remember was the sound of something that lingered in their ears. And they saw not the people, for they were free. That was Sheila Arnold with Wading in the Water. And as he said earlier, Sheila talks about creating that story and being inspired by the Mississippi legend of the singing river. In that legend, rather than facing enslavement or death at the hands of their enemies, the Pascagoula people walk into the river singing a song together, just like in Sheila's story. And the legends say that if you're near the Pascagoula River today, you can still hear the lingering song. That's just one legend of many that explain the strange musical quality of the sound of that river. But there are other true stories about resisting enslavement that look a lot like the legend of the Singing River. Here's one. It took place in 1803, and at that time, 75 Igbo people from Nigeria were packed aboard a cramped ship headed for slave markets around Savannah, Georgia. And on Dunbar Creek, those Igbo men and women rose up and in a fierce fight, they took control of the ship. In the skirmish, their captors were killed and the ship was run aground. Some say those Igbo people escaped into the marsh where some drowned and some were recaptured and some were never heard of again. But the story told by some of the people who were there says that the Igbo walked right into Dunbar Creek, led by the high Igbo chief, singing in their language, The water spirit brought us. The water spirit will take us home. And they perished, rather than being recaptured and sold into slavery. The place where that Igbo revolt happened at Dunbar Creek is today called Igbo Landing. Now, that's a true story. And the years have brought some mythical elements to the tale when it's told. In some versions of the story, the Igbo didn't perish in Dunbar Creek at all, but rather turned into birds and flew back to Africa. Hearing stories like this makes me feel dedicated to fostering freedom for everyone. They're sobering, these stories, and they make more difficult to bear the notion that anyone could be denied freedoms that I enjoy. Now, where do these stories take you? And who will you take along? There's a lot coming up, but first I want to introduce you to another show from the BYU Radio family of podcasts. The show is called Top of Mind, and it's perfect for people who want to engage with tough issues that matter in our communities, but are turned off by how polarizing and divisive these conversations can sometimes be. Each week, Top of Mind tackles one tough, important topic. An award-winning host, Julie Rose, talks with guests who have complicated perspectives that are sure to challenge you. Now, they're not trying to change your mind, just give you the chance to find more empathy and clarity so you can become a better citizen and a kinder neighbor. Listen to Top of Mind on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, all kinds of ways to find Top of Mind and listen whenever you like. 
whenever you need it. Top of mind with Julie Rose from BYU Radio. It's a pleasure to be with you today on The Apple Seed, and it's time for another freedom story. This one is a Martin Luther King Jr. story, and it's told for you by Charlotte Blake Alston. It's a rhyming story, a rap. And while Charlotte has since composed a number of these rhyming stories, this was the first, written back in 1986, when the nation was waiting in anticipation for President Ronald Reagan to sign a bill that would create a national holiday honoring the memory of Martin Luther King Jr. We celebrate that holiday today. In Charlotte's neck of the woods, poised to celebrate the signing of that bill, there was an interfaith organization dedicated to bridging divides between black Christian churches and synagogues. And that organization asked Charlotte to hold a workshop for the children of their community that would teach those kids about the legacy of Dr. King. This was all going to happen whether the bill was signed into law or not, but the bill was signed, of course. And Charlotte has been performing this rap about Martin Luther King Jr. ever since. Here she is, recorded live in the Appleseed studio. Let's all sing for Dr. King, because we've all got to help make freedom ring. Let's all sing for Dr. King, because we've all got to help make freedom ring. While Martin Luther King was a man of peace, he wanted all the hatred in the world to cease. There were some laws that were not fair, and people were suffering everywhere. Rosa Parks caused such a fuss when she would not stand on the bus. Dr. King stood by her side, and the people said, well, we won't ride. They all knew that they were right, so they all got together and decided to fight. They fought for justice and equality right here in America, the land of the free. They would not use any guns for this, but they would peacefully resist. King knew love could conquer hate, and truth did not discriminate. Finally, the bus company, you know, they had to change their policy. Anyone who paid the fare, they had the right to sit down anywhere. So let's all sing for Dr. King, because we've all got to help make freedom ring. Let's all sing for Dr. King, because we've all got to help make freedom ring. Well, pretty soon folks of different races began to protest in many places. They tried to change laws that were bad. They used all the courage that they had. Many of them were thrown in jail, but they didn't give up and they didn't fail. Thousands of people lent a hand. Thousands marched throughout the land. They finally marched to Washington to show the world what they had done. Cameras filmed the situation and people watched throughout the nation. They all listened to Dr. King when he said, we must let freedom ring from the mountaintop to the valley low. We must say no to old Jim Crow. Together, the people did demand that the government should take a stand to make sure laws are colorblind, because freedom, hey, is for all mankind. So let's all sing for Dr. King because we've all got to help make freedom ring. Let's all sing for Dr. King because we've all got to help make freedom ring. Now we live in a country that's full of laws to protect human rights. And that's important because, unfortunately, there are people who believe that we do all they can so we still cannot achieve. But we can't stop just like Dr. King. We've got songs for the world that we must sing. We can't be silent or run with dread when racism rears its ugly head. So keep your mind on peace, freedom, love. Love, continue building a nation to be proud of. A lot has been accomplished, but there's still more to do. And I'm sending out a question to each of you. I'd like you to think of what you're doing today to keep Dr. King's dream from fading away. So speak out when you see things that aren't right. Use truth and courage. Continue to the fight until everyone in this beautiful land can all walk together hand in hand as sisters and brothers in equality. Then America will always be the land of the free. So let's all sing for Dr. King because we've all got to help make free freedom ring. Let's all sing for Dr. King because we've all got to help make freedom ring. Yes, let's all sing for Dr. King because we've all got to help make freedom ring. Let's all sing for Dr. King because we've all got to help make freedom ring. That was Charlotte Blake Alston with a rap about Martin Luther King Jr. 
And we've dealt with some kind of important topics on the show today. And sometimes important topics can feel pretty heavy. When Charlotte was in the studio with us recording her Martin Luther King Jr. piece, I asked her about her work and how she handles heavy topics, especially how she presents heavy topics to young listeners. And this is what she said. There's a, a, a story poem. You heard the rap about Martin Luther King, but there's a story poem that I crafted for younger children. It's in simple language, not condescending. And one of the choices I had to make was whether or not I included in this poem for young children whether he died or not. And if I did, how he died. And I made the choice to include that. Um, he went out on a balcony, thought of the day ahead. They heard a shot. And when they looked... Martin was dead. Oh, what a sad time. People everywhere could not believe what happened there. Their hearts just felt so bare. And then it comes to hope. We are each a child of God, Martin used to say, and if we work together, we can make a better day. But when I said that, a parent came up to me afterwards and said, my child knew that he died, but he didn't know how. Another one came up and said that she had totally missed telling him that part of the story. And I think that with young children, depending upon how we choose to frame our stories, they can handle that information as well. And, and as I, that little example, I don't leave it there. You know, we, we, we end up with, with hope and with us working together to make a better world. And in that same spirit, we want to leave you with a little hope. When Sheila Arnold was in our studio, She lifted our spirits after telling us her story by singing for us and with us a song you may know. Feel free to sing along with This Little Light of Mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Mm-hmm. Shine all over the apple seed. I'm gonna let it shine. Shine all over the apple seed. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, then shine all over the apple seed. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, shine all over. BYU, I'm gonna let it shine. This is for y'all. Shine all over. BYU, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, shine all over. BYU, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, this little light of this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, oh, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, oh, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. One more time, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Ooh, you all become community. Oh, I love that. Give yourself a round of applause. That is so good. We loved singing with Sheila Arnold in our studio. It's been stories about freedom today, something the world is still struggling in some ways to figure out. And in that important struggle, as in any important struggle, listening to each other's stories is an enormously important step. Some might say the first important step. Thanks for being a part of our Appleseed community. We want to thank Sheila Arnold and Charlotte Blake Alston. You've listened to their stories. Now it's time to share some of your own. The Appleseed is produced by me, Sam Payne, Wendy Folsom, and Brian Tanner. Our audio engineers are Ashton Parkinson and DJ Cromarty. 
The rest of the Appleseed team, Kira Van Dam, Kelly Wormeister, Tristan Schetzel, Kay Hendricks, and Nico Wetzel. Hey, if you like today's podcast, subscribe, rate us, leave us a review, and tell your friends. That's how the podcast grows. We also love to receive emails. Email us at theappleseed at byu.edu. That's theappleseed, all one word, at byu.edu. Your thoughts and comments help us shape the future of the Appleseed. We're pleased and proud to be among the many podcasts produced by the BYU Radio family of shows. If you want more great storytelling for the whole family, then search for our companion podcast, Kaboom, where you'll hear original audio adventures for the whole family. You can find any episode of The Appleseed or Kaboom on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, on the BYU Radio app, or at byuradio.org. I'm Sam Payne, and we can't wait to be with you again on The Appleseed. Thank you.